everyone. Welcome to Quirky Cooking Chats. I'm Jo Whitten, your host, and I'm so glad you could join me today. We are going to be talking all about homeschooling today. I have Joanne from Aussie Homeschool Adventures joining me on the show, and we're going to be answering readers and listeners' questions today. Um, I get so many questions about homeschooling. I started homeschooling my kids when my eldest was the end of grade two. That's when I decided to homeschool. Um, A lot of people ask me why I started to homeschool. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on my story before I begin the interview with Joanne. Um, I always thought I would never homeschool. I also said ever since I was young, I was always like, I'm never having kids. And then I was like, I had kids. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to homeschool because I thought homeschool kids are a little bit weird and unsocialized and I don't want my kids to be like that and I don't want to homeschool. Never say never. (laughs) Um, And so fast forward to the time when my eldest child went to school. Um, She really struggled at school. We had a lot of... um, I guess a lot of mornings where she cried a lot, but that wasn't the main thing. The main thing was that at school she wasn't coping. She couldn't seem to understand the maths. She couldn't understand, um, you know, a lot of the subjects and she would get kept in at lunchtime. Even in grade two she would be kept in and she'd come home and she was a really thin little thing in the, and she'd come home and she hadn't eaten her lunch and I'd be like, why haven't you eaten your lunch? And she'd say, because I got kept in at lunchtime and I didn't have time. And I'm like, why did you get kept in? Because I I couldn't do my maths and I had to do it at lunchtime. And I'm like, grade two. (laughs) Anyway, um, there was a lot of other things that caused me to think about homeschooling. Um, There was a lot of stuff that went on with other kids and, um, you know, there's bullying and there's, all sorts of things that can go on at school and I know homeschooling's not for everyone but I just kept getting drawn towards it and I kept thinking I just want to homeschool I just want to homeschool my second child Simi was in preschool in that year and um, totally uninterested in learning anything all the other kids were writing their names and starting to read the alphabet no not semi he was running around outside you know playing with swords and things Um, and that was fine but he was totally uninterested um and I just really noticed how each child seemed to need different things and needed more support I guess So um, my sisters, my younger sister was already homeschooling. My older sister decided to start homeschooling and I already had quite a few friends that homeschooled. And by then I'd started meeting a lot of homeschool kids in our area that were absolutely gorgeous kids and so talented and creative and outgoing and you'd meet them at the grocery store where they were working and they'd be chat, chat, chat and Um, you'd see them on stage at the local folk festivals just blowing everyone away with their music. And I was like, actually, homeschool kids are cool and I really want my kids to be be homeschooled. So I completely changed my mind on that and I told my sisters, I'm going to start homeschooling. They're like, you can't homeschool. You're not organised enough. (laughs) I'm such a creative. And um, I was like, nope, I'm doing it. So um, we did. We started homeschooling when India was starting grade three. Simi was starting grade one. I had, so how old would they be? Um, Maybe I had a four-year-old and a two-year-old as well. So it was pretty full on. Um, And as I talk about in the podcast, I did kind of start with the mindset of doing school at home, sit down, you know, work for hours and that didn't work so well so then I became more flexible and got into the flow of home education rather than school at home Um, and it really was perfect for our family Um, of course it wasn't always easy but it was amazing and I would never change a thing I loved it the kids loved it they didn't want to go to school even when I gave them the opportunity to go to school they went for a term or two 
two days a week and then decided we don't like it. So they came back home. Um, and it was, it was just a really beautiful experience. So in this podcast, Joanne and I answer questions about things like um, what, how do you get started? What kind of curriculum do you use and, and do you use curriculum? And if so, how do you decide on what curriculum to use? And, um, you know, do you do your reporting and how do you do that? We talk about um, how to deal with difficult situations, like if your kids are refusing to listen to you or they're um, struggling with their schooling and having outbursts of anger, what, what you can do to help them. Um, we talk about the importance of the big picture with homeschooling um, and what that involves and um, basically setting your kids up to have um, a happy and fulfilled life by starting them on the right track when they're young. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, we had a really fun chat and, um, yeah, I think it'll be really helpful for a lot of you. I've put some links below for um, Joanne's got a great YouTube channel. So if you are interested in homeschooling at all, I recommend go and have a look at Aussie Homeschool Adventures. She has all sorts of videos on there, everything from a day in the life of Aussie homeschooling. She's got a homeschool room tour. She's got um, homeschooling curriculum choices in Australia. She's got all sorts of, um, yeah, back to school supplies, what she, what she gets ready for the homeschool year, how to do her reporting. Um, this is a Queensland based kind of thing, but it's pretty similar in most states. Um, how to plan for homeschooling, um, see how she plans her yeah, homeschool. Right see, sorry, see how she plans her homeschool week. Um, so there's some really great videos there. So I recommend having a look and you can also follow her on Instagram at Aussie Homeschool Adventures. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you enjoy. Welcome, Joe. Thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So Joe is the brains behind <laughs> um, Aussie Homeschool Adventures. So she has a YouTube channel and Instagram where she shares her homeschool journey. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how old your kids are, how long you've been homeschooling and why you started? Because everybody wants to know that. Oh. <laughs> so my name's Joe. I've got two girls. They are 10, nearly 11 and 8, nearly 9. I have to say it like that because I've got to keep track of it for myself um, yeah. I've been homeschooling since they were little so my girls have actually never been to school so mm -hmm. we started when my youngest was four five-ish with that preschool pre-k kind of stuff so about five six years I've been doing this for now we started because my oldest actually went through a period of and I can't really think of anything other than to describe it as probably a really severe case of separation anxiety Something happened at school. We don't know what. The school can't really say what happened. So we pulled her out because she went from being this really happy, could drop her off, no dramas at all, to no, don't, don't you dare leave me. And it took 12 months for her to actually get to the point where I could leave her again without her having a major oh. moment. So we started with that. And we've talked lots over the years about her going to school and she's never really been interested. She's like, no. My youngest is flat out like, nope, <laughs> no, don't want to go. Nope, I'm happy to stay home with you. Thanks, mum. I'm all good. So my oldest is now at the point where she's thinking about it for high school and I'm kind of going, eh, maybe, we'll see. But we take each year as it comes. I'm very much a, we'll just, we'll take each year as it comes and see where we're at and see what we're thinking at that time. Yeah, it's pretty much, that's pretty much how we were. Um, did you find that you started off um, with a certain way of doing things and that's changed as you went along with the way that you teach? Uh, it's changed as the kids have gotten older because um, mm -hmm. when we started when they were little, like it was a lot, our lessons were a lot shorter. So we were, we were only doing school for about an hour a day at most, maybe yeah. half an hour, an hour of formal book work time frame where we'd sit down and do like quiet time, not quiet time. Um, I wish it was quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd read a book and we'd talk about letters and sounds and we'd do a little bit of this and that. 
I've always been a little bit um, traditional, I guess. So we've always used books and done a curriculum as such um, since we began. So I've never really been an unschooler or followed that sort of path. I know about it. I know quite a bit about it. And as the kids have gotten older, we do a little bit of that in as much as like I ask the kids sort of what topics they want to learn about in, in a broad regard. So like our science curriculum this year, we're doing animals. We're doing a zoology unit because that's something that they've asked to learn about. I've got some weather science there that we're going to do as well because they want to learn more about the weather because the weather's been so crazy this last mm. in Queensland. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So we've got a bunch of questions from um, listeners and um, I think a lot of them will sort of get answered as you talk about other things, but we might just start off with the question that everybody asks, which is how do you socialise kids that are homeschooled? How do you encourage them to make friends and how do you get them out there? (laughs) Oh, you don't socialise and we keep them in the closet in the dark, right? (laughs) No. I've got some good stories about that too, but you go ahead. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have joked. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. There is so many active homeschooling groups where I am on the Sunshine Coast. There is so many options. Mm. I could literally be out five days a week, yep. several times a day, going to this and to skating and to this park play and that park play and there's a class here and a class there. So if you've got a car and time and money, then you can – be as social as you want um my girls we don't do a lot we tend to be a little bit more introverted and that's just our family we're we're Mm -hmm. quite introverted by nature so we like our own company we have lots of friends we do plays so people come over here or we go and meet up with them at a park my girls since the pandemic because that broke homeschooling for everybody yeah everyone that was like oh we're homeschooling now and all us homeschoolers are going no you're not your, your crisis schooling, your, um, yeah, it, it wasn't the it's same. different. Mm. It was very different. It was very stressful, very yeah. um, awkward and hard time for everyone, even for us as homeschoolers, because there was no social meetups. We couldn't go mm. to the park. We couldn't go and do our classes here and there because they weren't allowed to run. So during the pandemic, we discovered Zoom, like everyone. Mm-hmm. So they connected with a few people over Zoom and we still connect with Zoom now and messenger kids. So they often hop okay. on and play like Minecraft with their friends and they'll call their friends and they've got the iPad propped up beside the computer and they're talking to each other and they're playing their Minecraft games and the noise is just something else. Oh, my goodness. I had to buy them headphones. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, Drives you crazy. I'm over the noise. So we do that. We attend a church. So the girls go to church with us and they make friends through church. Um, I try and host here at my home. It's easiest for me because I'm actually only a single car family. So it makes it really awkward for us Mm -hmm. to get out and do too much. I have people over here about once a month-ish for a play and just a social catch-up. So there's lots of different ways. And the girls play netball. We've just started netball again Mm -hmm. this year. So we did last year as well and this year, which I love. Team sports for that socialisation, that learning how to get along with your peers because you have to get along to play in a team. Yes. No, we found sports really good um, and we had homeschool groups and youth clubs and church and all sorts of things. But I had to laugh one day because I had a lady come over and um, we were doing a cooking workshop in my kitchen and she's, she's like quizzing me on homeschooling. She's like, yeah, but how do your kids socialise? Like do they have any friends? And just then the door burst open and three of my kids and probably five other kids, um, mostly Indigenous kids, all came flying in the house. They were just so loud. They're having the greatest time. You know, they're just running around doing everything and they ran past and she just goes, never mind. (laughs) It was so funny. (laughs) And another time I was on stage speaking um, at the Mind Forum in Sydney Um, There was hundreds of people and I had my son Isaac with me and he was like 14 at the time and he was presenting with me. And we're standing up there at the Q&A time and people were asking things like, are your children socialised? And I'm just like, my son is standing here on stage talking to 300 people. (laughs) And it was just so funny. Um, Not too many 14-year-olds do that with um, confidence and 
No, he was, I think he was, was he 14 or 16? I can't remember when he spoke to a thousand people on stage and he's the most outgoing kid you'd ever meet. Um, but in the same family, you can have a really introverted child mm. and you've raised them the same way. And it's exactly the same if you're at public school or whatever. I've got a friend who said to me, I went to public school. I did all the things that they say to socialise and I am such an introvert and I would much rather be at home not talking to anyone. So, you know, you you just get them into all the things that they enjoy and you you have neighbourhood friends and sports friends and all these things and then it's up to them how far they take that. It's just everybody's different. Absolutely. And mm. I find that as homeschool kids, they're often socialised with a much wider range of ages. Yes. Like their friends aren't necessarily all 10. Their mm. friends can be younger and older and, you know, they exactly. learn how with a wider range range like my my 11 year old can hold quite a reasonably good conversation with an adult and she's getting much better at actually listening and responding and not just talking <laughs> but she <likes> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes I find that um is really lovely the way that my kids would play with someone would come over with a baby or a toddler and they'd go and play with them and you know entertain them for us yeah um, and then an adult will come over and they'd sit at the table and have a cuppa and it's like you say, you don't, you're not stuck in that peer group yeah. when you're homeschool. Um, one question was how do you raise kids that are not insular and weird? <laughs> I wouldn't know. Well, our kids, kids are pretty weird, weird, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm sorry. My kids are weird. I'm weird. So they, they, they were um, they <laughs> They're going to learn from you. Start. So oh, if yeah. you're weird, they're going to be weird. Yeah. But we're not insular. <laughs> no, we're not insular either. We're, Just we're, we're quirky. Into it, but we're not. I call it quirky. <laughs> I, I like that term, quirky. Yes, we're definitely yeah. quirky family too. But you know, that was one of the main reasons I didn't homeschool at first because I thought the same thing. I thought that kids would end up really weird and really socially inept if they homeschooled. And so we did the first two years at public school, and then there was just so many. I'll talk, I've, I've talked about that in the intro, why we started homeschooling. Yeah. Um, and I just found um, I kept meeting homeschool kids because in the area we live, it's a bit like the Sunshine Coast. We've got a lot of um, people that homeschool. There's a lot of homeschool groups. It's very, it's very normal here. And yeah. um, I kept meeting homeschool kids that were the most loveliest kids and so creative and so talented um and there was a couple of girls that worked at our local grocery store and every time I met them I thought I want my kids to be like that and so that's what persuaded me to homeschool because their kids were so amazing and I was like okay that was not a real thing that I thought <laughs> so yeah perception is the weird thing and you kind of it is I hadn't really heard much about homeschooling in Australia before I started five years ago I didn't know I had no idea and I've certainly watched it grow, especially in the last 12 months. Um, but in the last five years, the community has definitely grown. Mm. Every year there's more families looking into it, more people jumping on board and doing it. And there is, there are some big differences in the way you homeschool as well, as yes. you're probably well aware. Everything mm. from a distance education school mm -hmm. through to your unschooling. And it's a whole, it's a spectrum of different styles. So you can really do whatever works best for you and your family and your children. So, and your own confidence and confidence level as a parent too. Yes. And I think that's quite often the case is that you start with the very structured homeschooling through distance ed. Mm. Um, some people do and, mm. or, or through a distance ed school that is especially for homeschoolers. And then as you go along, you go, well, actually, I want to tweak this a bit. And this child actually suits this style of learning better while this one suits this style. And you sort of, mm. I found that we swapped and changed curriculums over the 16 years that we homeschooled. And I used different curriculums for different kids. Yep. Because sometimes there was just, you know, one that learns very, very creatively and visually, another one that's very book work, mathematical. Yep. Um, and you can't do the same kind of style of schooling with all of them and that's the problem with um, all the kids being in a classroom it can be really difficult mm. can't it absolutely mm. and we get that opportunity as homeschool parents to be able to tailor that program that learning mm. to to meet that child where they're at and they'll 
they'll um, often thrive more in that home environment to be able to learn the way that suits them best. So it's really quite good. Yeah. Okay, the other question that I get a lot and you probably get a lot is how do you do it all? How do you juggle it with little kids? We don't do it all. That's just don't do let's it just all. say I'm it right now. Say, I'll just say it right now. I don't do it all. You should see the baskets and washing. It's a good thing the camera's facing this <laughs> way because there's like. Why do you four- think I'm at the office? <laughs> Can't see the washing. I, I retreated down to the bedroom away from the children and the noise source because <laughs> yeah. they're out there drawing and creating storybooks. So they're doing their language arts lesson all by themselves. They're <laughs> coloring, drawing pictures and awesome. writing stories together. So I'm like, oh, okay. You guys stay out there. I'm going to come in here and close the door. And yeah, that's why this camera is <laughs> narrow because you can't see all the. Yes. Did you have a baby while um, while you had a homeschooler, or was it always no? A, a little bit older. It could be years between my girls. So I had a mm. year or so where I was working with my four year old, and mm-hmm. my then two and a half year old was not interested, and I never. Never tried to homeschool toddlers. I see lots of Americans that they like, oh, my two and a half year old wants to do school. And I'm like, my two and a half year old wanted to eat the pencils and run away. And the crayons. She was yeah. not at all interested in learning or sitting down to do school with her big sister. She was like, I'm like okay. yeah. As it was, I had to coax her in as, as a four year old to come and sit and do do little bits. So I think I never part of. That- yeah, I think part of the reason people get so freaked out about the idea of homeschooling with a range of ages is their perception of homeschooling, would you say? Um, yeah. That it's school at home, everybody's sitting in a classroom. Yeah. So do you want to give a bit of a more re- realistic view of what homeschooling, a homeschooling day looks like? Uh, well, on my channel, I've actually got about my last video that I just shared last week is actually a day in the life. So oh, I perfect. Actually- I'll put a link to that below. <laughs> yeah. I actually take you through what a day looks like for me here. Awesome. Um, we do sit down at desks and do schoolwork. Mm-hmm. Um, not every day. Most days we do. Like I said, I'm pretty traditional in that regard. Um, and because my girls are only two years apart, so they're only a school grade apart. So one's working in grade three. I have to stop and think. Okay. And, one's working in, <laughs> and one's working in about a grade four, three, four level. Like there's grade three and four or four and five, depending on. Mm-hmm. the subject yeah the subject sort of and just yeah so they're about that level we're not I'm not too stressed about grade levels which is why you know putting them into public schools like hang on I know I was the same my kids would get asked what grade are you in and they'd be looking at me like grade am I in it mum <laughs> like well in this subject you're doing grade four work and in this subject you're doing grade three work and so yeah it's kind of it's much more flex can you oh. just give us a little overview of what your school day looks like? So we start our schoolwork. I aim to start about 9, 9.30 if we can get it down. Um, so we'll start our day with our Bible. Then we do, the girls do a little spelling activity sheet. So just a, an A4 page that's something fun that they actually really love. So I might be writing their words in rainbow colours or rolling a dice and matching up the number and writing that word out. Then they do their language lesson, which I will sit with them depending on the child. My youngest, I still sit with usually and help her with it. My oldest, I'll go and help her read it, make sure she's got it, then leave her to work independently. Um, And then we'll do maths and then we'll have morning tea somewhere in amongst that time because they're always eating. (laughs) I will literally be making food snacks almost all day. (laughs) It's kind of part and parcel, isn't it, of having kids at home? (laughs) Pretty much. I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. hungry again really I just the fed fridge you. is right there <laughs> go and find something oh yeah. my goodness um and then we'll break we'll have lunch and then after lunch we'll come back and we do our I call it a loop so they don't but they don't really loop um and our elective subjects I don't know so after lunch we'll do like yesterday we did our zoology so our science lesson we did an art lesson and we did no that was all we did yesterday and other days we might do our HAS, so that's Humanities and Social Sciences, mm-hmm. which can cover a variety of different things. So we're doing Australia at the moment. We're currently learning about Queensland. So we've been researching Queensland and learning about different parts of our state, different landmarks. We're about to start doing a research project on, um, oh, my gosh, I've gone blank on the name. The guy that discovered the Brisbane River. I've completely gone blank on his name. <laughs> I can't remember either. <laughs> so I have to ask the kids. 
Oh yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll know, but I'm not gonna, not even gonna go there. Um, so <laughs> we'll do that. We made a little model of Australia with that the other day. So then we did has. Um, some days we'll do PE, so I'll take them outside and we'll play some netball training skills and drills. Um, some days we'll do history, art, uh, history. So I'm reading Story of the World, so we'll read a, a little bit out of that, and we'll do some activities. So sometimes it's crafts to do with that, like making the beads from a from a like a jade bead to make a Chinese jade bracelet. Um, we do a bit of Australian history through our house as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we're usually done mm. if they've actually gotten in and worked hard. We can be done by about one o'clock. Yep. So. And this is one thing that I found with my kids when they're really little, like you said, an hour or two, that's mm. it. But you are teaching them throughout the day. Oh, even yeah. if it's not sit down, it's like while you're cooking, you're explaining things. And while you're going for a walk, you're talking about nature. And it's all very intertwined because it becomes that's part of your mindset, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but then as they get older into the teenage years, then they're working, you know, pretty much a school day hours. Mm. um and but you know I never really had to get them to the stage where they were working till 10 o'clock at night like we did at high school I don't know if you ever no, had yes. that at high school but um you know I think at, at high school there's so much interruption mm. um there's so many other things going on there's distractions and so you're not sitting and focusing quite as much as you can mm. on your own which yeah if for those of you who worked at home during the pandemic, you'll know what I mean. Like sometimes you're like, oh, thank goodness we don't have all those meetings because I can get so much more done. It's kind of like that with school and homeschooling, I find. Yeah. It's like if you teach your kids from really young to be self-motivated and to um, be able to learn on their own, like your kids are doing right now, mm. working on their stories, um, as they get older, they just buckle down and get done what they have to, to get done. And I know some homeschool kids, like my my nephew, for instance, he'd get up at six and he'd be done by, you know, before lunch because yep. he wanted to have the other half of the day to work. Mm. Um, and so you've got that flexibility, which I love about homeschooling. Absolutely. I know some kids that will, yeah, get up at six, have mm. it all done by eight, nine o'clock, so they're done and they've got the rest of the day to play. They got up early. And exactly. My girls aren't quite that motivated. <laughs> um. That's right. I mean, but it's nice having that flexibility, though, and, and I find at different ages they sort of change around what they do oh. and it's good. Do you have, um, what's your morning routine like before school? Do you get them to do chores and things or how they do you work in your family? Job. So we tend to do, so we're, um, Probably a little bit too screen heavy a family. I'm I'm trying to pull it back mm. in, but it's really hard. I think because... most families struggle with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband's an IT guy, so and I'm quite <laughs> technical as well. So we tend to both be, and because like yourself, I'm on social media, so I try and make mm. sure I'm there, checking messages, responding to people, sharing content, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Which means I'm on my phone. Um, mm-hmm. So therefore, my kids see me on my phone, and they're like, "Well, then we want to be on a screen." So they'll have a little bit of screen while they defrost, as I say. My kids are really, have always been, my three-year-old, when she was three, she'd wake up like a teenager. She'd stagger out of bed. Oh, no. Already uh, started. So she started as a three-year-old. They've never woken up particularly and bounced out of bed apart from Christmas morning. Um, so we, we have a very slow start to the day, very chill. Yeah. We'll do breakfast. And then I send them down to make their beds, do their hair, brush their teeth, get dressed, all of those sorts of things. So by the time they've done all of that, I've done my own breakfast and my own hair and that, that sort of stuff. And then we start our schoolwork, like I said, around that nine o'clock mark. So, they, mm-hmm. yeah, they do a few jobs, not lots. Um, they have a couple of jobs that are set throughout the week that they are required yeah. to do. I've started them doing their own washing. So they're supposed to take That's their good. basket, fold it and put it away. They'll feed the dog some mornings. They, my eight-year-old loves cleaning the toilet. So that's her job. <laughs> I don't complain. And my, my <laughs> 10-year-old bathroom sink, so she'll wipe all of that yeah. down and my one cleans the toilet. So they do that at least once a week for me. So that's mm-hmm. pretty much their jobs. And then other stuff is we ask them to do it. Yeah. I find that having those set chores for each child really worked for us. 
um, mm. because then if something didn't get done, you knew, you knew who to ask. Um, yeah. So there was one one daughter on bathroom and toilet, one on floors, you know, all the vacuuming and the mopping, um, one on bins and tidying the outside verandas. Um, I can't remember what, oh, one on washing. Um, and that just happened like clockwork. They knew they had to get that done every morning, especially as they got older. Um, yeah. And then people would say to me, how do you have time to work and homeschool and do everything else? I'm like, well, I don't do a lot of housework. My kids do the dishes and my husband. Um, I generally do the cooking with a bit of help sometimes. Now it's small because they're older. Um, And then they each have their chores. So they basically each had a section of the house to look after. Um, So I was more doing deep cleaning type stuff on Saturdays. Mm. Um, So I'd get up in the morning and start you know, my morning routine and get a bit of work done and then I'd oversee them doing their schoolwork while doing my work and cooking. Yeah. But I didn't have to spend all day doing chores because we just all got in and did it. And I think for yeah. those people who asked how do, you, how do you keep up with everything and how do you juggle everything, you've got to get the family involved. Absolutely. Um, and not Very try good. and do it all yourself. My husband is really supportive. He does a lot. Oh, He'll that's even, good. He cooks probably three or four nights a week at least. Oh, that must be I wonderful. <laughs> it is great. He's actually really quite good. Um, I've taught him a lot. He'll um, he'll follow books. Like he loves, he'll cook recipes out of your cookbook as well. We can, we'll follow a recipe along together and um, do that sort of stuff. And there's, there's meals that we'll cook together. So we sort of both yeah. cook at the same time, which makes it go faster so that we can actually eat yes. quicker. Um, because we're on a little bit of acreage here, we don't have a lot of animals. We've only got chickens. So... And we have a bit of a unique living situation in as much as my parents live on property with us. So nice. they have they have their own separate house, sort of, mm-hmm. like connected to ours, but they have their mm-hmm. own separate bathroom, kitchen, lounge, living area. And that's right down like the other end of our house. Mm-hmm. So mum helps us. She looks after the chickens as well. She's out. She's not out with the kids at the moment, but the kids know grandma's there. If they need something, they'll probably yes. go and have her rather than coming and bashing on my door and yeah. annoying me. So that makes it a little bit easier. But mum doesn't really help me with the homeschooling of the children. It's not her thing. She's um, actually a retired teacher. So she's oh. not really keen on the homeschooling thing. Um, That's funny. <laughs> I know. She, she doesn't really like it. She's gotten better with it. Yeah. But I don't think she loves it. I think she's still waiting for me to actually send the kids to school. Yeah. Um, so we just don't talk about it. Yeah. We just... It, it sounds like we have a very had a very similar situation because I was always two doors down from mum three different houses I was two doors down from mum and so yeah. I did have that support all the time and mum mm. wasn't my mum and dad weren't that keen on us homeschooling either um you know it was kind of like well you guys went to school you turned out all right kind of thing but it was just so many things that led to it and then so many other people homeschooling and then my sisters started homeschooling and I was like well, I'm going to homeschool too. And they're like, you can't homeschool. You're not organised enough. I'm like, I'm going to homeschool. <laughs> I'm a very creative person, so a bit flowy. You know, the kitchen would be a mess and I'd be sitting on the floor drawing with the kids. But that's okay. We got through it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Happy kids. But as long as the kids were fit, right. at the end of the day, I say to myself, are the kids alive? Tick. Are they fed? Tick. Is there, is there, um, are they happy? Yes. Excellent. Job's done. That's the, the main thing. They look like a tornado has been through it. Um, That's pretty my normal. House is never clean. Like it, it's yeah. it's never it's never dirty, dirty. It's just never tidy. There's, there's yeah. always yeah art projects here because we're we're quite creative too. Myself as yeah. well, and my kids. So there's always yeah there's always mess everywhere. You'll see that if you ever watch any of my YouTube videos, you'll see that I I don't tend to um tidy up and make it. You look keep it real. Good. Oh yeah, I keep it real. That's I'm what really, we like. That's what we like. I'm such a I yeah, I don't I don't try and pretend to be something that I'm not. I'm very much who I am. And if you ever came to my house, you'd see that my house is like that. I've actually made some really great connections through Instagram with people like yourself, another really good friend of mine who also homeschools. She and I have met up in real life through in, we met through Instagram and we've met up in yeah. real life. We're both like, yep, we are like we say we are on socials. So it's really yeah. lovely. Yeah. And I think as the kids get older, it does get easier to keep things oh, yeah. tidy. But when they're young and they've got, 
craft stuff and toys and schoolwork everywhere, it's going to be it's going to be a bit messy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the older they get, so don't they expect get... perfection in your no. home. <laughs> Lower your expectations, yes, and learn to handle mess and just be able to go you know what it's okay that's why we don't homeschool at the dining room table I started out at dining table and I got over it because the dining table would just be covered with schoolwork and papers and books because we weren't finished something so we'd shove it aside and then we'd go to eat dinner and it's like um it's just there's nowhere no yeah. to eat tea so we actually bought tables and that's why we actually have a school room now was so that I can oh, go, that's well, great the school room is there school stuff and their tables the tables are always messy. There's always art on them or computers out or papers and books and stuff. So, yeah, you, yeah. Just, you just have to learn to have grace for yourself, grace for the mm. house and know that, you know what, it's okay. And then during like the school holiday breaks and stuff, I tend to binge clean and tidy and Same. beautiful and perfect and then we get back into school and a week later it's trash. But it's okay. <laughs> I remember those days well. Yeah, my house is a lot tidier nowadays. I would love to hear a bit more about the curriculum you use, if you want to share some about that. So, yeah, I'm a curriculum girl. I use Masterbooks, which is an American curriculum, which everyone goes, oh, how can you use an American curriculum in Australia? You tweak. (laughs) You tweak it as you go. Yeah. So, especially the biggest issue is like maths and measurement and stuff. And at the grades that my kids are at at the moment, it's not a big deal. I sat down with my oldest maths book the other night and it was a page of like one, one mile equals how many, whatever it is. I've forgotten the imperial conversions. I don't pay that much attention to it. And I just got out my whiteout and I whited out the American Mm -hmm. measurements and put in the metric. One 100 meters is one, one equals what kilometers, Yeah, you know, how many, centimeters equals how many meters and things like that so I just do a straight swap like that with that concept um so and if there's like a little square to do the perimeter and it's five centi- and it's five inches long five cent five inches by five inches I just say it's five centimeters yeah. it doesn't matter in that regard because they're not actually measuring it and drawing it out they're just learning the concept of doing the perimeter mm. so we use master books math lessons for a living education their language lessons for living education. They're Charlotte Mason inspired. So the lessons. Oh, I love Charlotte they, Mason. That's what we used. Yeah. So the lessons are, they have lots of stories in the, in the lesson every mm-hmm. week. There's a little story that they link it into what they're taught, sort of teaching about, which I love. And the lessons that we take is about 15, 20 minutes. If the kids actually, 15 minutes, if they can focus and actually do mm-hmm. it. Um, sometimes a little bit longer as they as my oldest has gotten older like I'm looking at her book now and the lessons have grown slightly but they're not they're not long there's not lots of busy work as they would be in a school mm. room but sit and wait for their classmates to catch up so we use yeah. master books for maths and language the, ma- the language side of things I haven't noticed anything that's been you know apart from a few words like your mom versus mum <laughs> we've, I've dealt with that since the beginning and we've just always talked yeah. about all well, Americans spell it with the O, we spell it with the U. And, mm. and, they say and it's, it's kind of handy like, knowing that because mm. living online as we do these days, you kind of oh, have yeah. to know, oh, that's the American spelling. That's the mm. English spelling. Yeah. Well, even the word like colour, for example, mm. spell it with the O-U-R, but yeah. O-R is the American spelling, but it's becoming a lot more widely used these days. And yes. Yes, they're seeing the O-U-R spelling of colour. So we're becoming a really globalised yeah. kind of, which is a bit, you know, my mother has conniptions, I'm sure. Doesn't really yeah. want any, I don't mind, but as long as they know how to go, okay, so we use an S or they use a Z and vice versa mm. and things like that. So it doesn't it doesn't make a big difference. Um, we use their, so their zoology is from Masterbooks as well, which I really love because, once again, it's that, 15-minute lesson, we're reading from a beautiful mm. book, lots of great yep. pictures, and then just a very simple fill-in-the-blank kind of activity sheet, which is great. Or sometimes there's like a little code to crack to fill in the sheet with or mazes or like the last one they did was they we were talking about dinosaurs and they drew their own dinosaur, what they thought if they could make their own dinosaur, what would it be kind of thing. So that was a bit mm. of fun. Um, that's our science. Our art, I'm using Evans Moore, which is how to teach art to children. So it's for grades one to six. 
So it starts really basically um, learning yeah. about line and shape, colour, and you go through the different elements of art, which is really good. Um, our house is actually my friend Jamie, the one I was talking about earlier. She's just created this program. So it's house. So it's done by an Australian homeschooling mum for an Australian homeschool family. So it's fantastic because it's actually oh, done. Oh, you'll have to give us the link for that one as well. <laughs> Sure, I can show you. I can share the link with Jamie. She's just redone it all because she did it one way, and then was like, "Oh, hang on, I can't sustain that." So she's just tweaked it all, and she's changing it. So there's a ten week program, um, Australia and Me. So we're we're part part of the way through that. So it's been really good because, like I said, oh, it's good. written by an Australian for an Australian homeschooling market. So many mm-hmm. of the uh, curriculums aren't actually either Australian or they're not written for homeschoolers. They're written for classrooms that people have tried to pull into a homeschool thing where I find that there's lots and lots of busy work or lots of activities. Yeah. Things that just don't work in when you've only got like one or two kids or maybe Mm. three kids that are doing it, you know, in, in, in your group, discuss this or in your group, you know, we're going to play a game of, of tag. I have (laughs) two children tag. Yeah. Yeah. So I found that was really frustrating, which is why I went to the American stuff because it was actually written for a homeschool mindset. It was done Mm. for homeschoolers by homeschoolers, which is why I like Mm. masters because they are all like the lady that's done their language lessons is a homeschool mum. She's homeschooled her like 12 children or something crazy. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah, she's got a lot of kids. They're not all hers biologically, but they've done a lot of adopting, which is really cool. Yeah. so she does all that sort of stuff. So they they know what they're doing when it comes to yeah. the curriculum. So yeah, yeah, I love master books. I use a lot of their stuff. I've used a little bit of the Good and the Beautifuls, um, which is a very popular one here in Australia now. I've used a bit of their science units, and I've used the unit study style stuff from Gather Round Homeschool, which is another new curriculum company. So they okay. do family style learning. So that basically the yeah. concept is that you might learn for a season on space. And you buy the unit on space and it covers everything from your history, maths, not not maths, sorry, history, language, arts, science, social studies, all those sorts of things are incorporated into the one thing while you're learning about space. And she has a range of different workbooks. So if you buy it digitally, which is what I usually do and then print them here at home. So it goes from like pre-K, so pre-writers right through until high school. And they're all learning about the same thing, but the workbooks are leveled. So each child can work at their appropriate level. Yeah, it's a really nice concept too. That's pretty much the kind of thing we did. We used sunlight mostly. Yep. So that is an American curriculum, but the um, the books are very um, world history focused and all of that kind of thing. And then I did my own, I made up my own section on Australian history, just collecting books from that were recommended by other homeschoolers and used that Charlotte Mason style to teach the Australian uh, the Australian history. Um, mm. But it's that family learning where you do, you sit down in the morning and you read really good books all together on different subjects. So literature, history, science, all that kind of thing. And then they have their own workbooks and their own um, assignments and things that are age appropriate. Um, but there's a lot of discussion as a group. And there's a lot of practical um, ideas to, you know, looking at maps or globes together and working mm-hmm. out where this happened and looking at a timeline. And while this was happening in history, what else was happening in history at this time? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, I didn't know that was at the same time. You know, all of mm-hmm. that stuff is just really great to do together. Absolutely. Um, we read some really good books together and that's some of the most precious memories that we have of when my kids were younger. Um, sitting and reading together in the mornings yeah. um, and then they had their own reading um, that was their age level or their reading level um, that they did on their own as well um, mm. so we started off very structured with school at home um, and it just didn't suit us quite as well and I found as time went on I just wanted to get more flexibility in there so that's when I started using different curriculums and I used the maths online for yeah. the kids, which is the Australian maths, mm. and that has all the checking online. So I didn't have to sit down and check all their work. It was all done 
um, <laughs> automatically. And if they had something go wrong, then I could sit down and watch the video with them and help them understand it. But otherwise they were working on their own, which I loved. Yep. Um, we did learning language arts through literature, yep. um, a lot of literature-focused stuff, a lot of nature-based learning. Um, and well, it just was... do, why not? Yeah. Um, it was just such a lovely way to learn together. And as they get older, um, I've had this question a lot as well, how does it change as they get older? Um, you do have to focus more on the... Um, like if you want, if your kids want to go to uni, especially, um, you've got to focus more on the book work type stuff as they get older. Yeah. And it's really dependent on the character and what of the child and what they want to do in life, um, what their goals are. And you, you just keep talking through that, just like you do with kids in high school to figure yeah. out which direction they want to go. Um, Isaac was the one that was very maths and language focused. Um, and computer coding and all that kind of stuff. So by the time he got to the end of grade 10, I was just like, Ugh, this is too hard for me. I can't teach you Chinese. I can't teach you Japanese. I can't teach you computer coding. And I do not understand your maths. So he started going. <laughs> so he started um, distance ed through Queensland distance ed yep. for grade 11 and 12, because yep. that way he could he could do, you know, Chinese and computer coding and all that with the teacher's help. Yeah. Um, he kept doing some of the stuff on his own though. Like for instance, he taught himself Japanese. He was conversational in one year. Wow. Um, he's just, he's, I mean, he's got the OCD brain, so he does the super focus thing and he can yeah. just learn languages and maths and things like that. Um, and that's where and you so go with your wiring and your, your kids' passions. And that's where that's you're it. always on that unschooling kind of yes, you know it's it's a like I said it's a spectrum. You can't be it hard is. fast on it. You really can't. And you have to be led a little bit by each child. Like mm. what's their what's the way that they naturally mm. um, thrive? I, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Um, so that was that was great for him because he was starting to lose focus with me towards that age. Mm. He was starting to get slack, but once he um, started the distance ed, he did really well. Um, yeah. But he didn't decide to go to uni. He thought he'd have a year off and do some work at a, there's a private school up here that um, homeschool, has a homeschool department that has like 600 families or something in their homeschool department. That's Jubilee Christian College in yeah. our area. Yeah, and so he, yeah, so he started working there formatting their curriculum. Oh, so wow. that's, yeah, so he's been doing that for a couple of years now and he was just going to do it for a little while, but he loves it and it's just perfect for him. So he hasn't ended up going to uni yet. I mean, he still may um, and that's completely that fine. Like, things. He's still, what, yeah. 20 something? 20, yeah. yeah. He's good. And, and, I've, and I think that's um, something that people often ask is how can they go to uni if they've, done homeschooling there's so many different paths into uni so many different paths I I went through public school till the end of grade 11 and then we went overseas traveling so I did homeschooling for two years because I didn't manage to get it all done in um, one year and when I got back to Australia I had not quite the right um, qualifications or, or paperwork or whatever to get into uni mm. but I wanted to do art so I just took my portfolio in and said can I have a can I have a you know a meeting to sit and they looked at my portfolio and said yep you're in so you know it can be so many different ways to get into uni mm. um, so you don't there's actually I think there's about six different ways and um, I won't yeah. go through them all here but people can um, do a bridging course like kids can do a bridging course through TAFE there's all sorts of ways um, but, yeah, so that's a bit of an example from my family. The ATAR, like whatever it is now, the, the school mm. that you get from grade 12, it's only really in that first 12 months, I believe, after you've left grade 12 that you need it to get in. Anything mm. beyond that, you can apply as what they call a mature age student. Mature age and, student. And they don't really look at your schooling history that much anymore either. No. So it's more about your experience and your, you know, yeah. yeah, and I think it's good for kids to have a year off and mm. work for a bit before they go to uni because they need to raise a bit of money to get there because it's expensive if they want to go. Um, yes. And 
and also just to figure out what they want to do because I think most people find they start off in one area and then they go, mm. actually, no, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> so it's good to grow up a little and then figure yeah. as you figure it out. So I've got yeah. one, someone asked what my kids are doing now. My eldest is 24. She'll be 25 in July. Um, she did a horticulture traineeship through um, local, um, it's native fruit orchards where it's all organic and using Indigenous growth methods and it's really cool. She did her traineeship through them That's and cool. my second child, my son, also um, worked for them. So they've both worked in horticulture. Um, they're both doing that part-time still. Um, she's also looking for some other work at the moment but mostly gardening stuff. And then my, yeah, my second child, he's doing part horticulture, part woodwork or yep. working on woodwork for my online store, learning from my dad who's a um, really talented woodcarver and yep. my Isaac's working formatting um, for the school, doing the computer work and my youngest daughter is working part-time at a motel but the most of her time is spent doing artwork um, for commissions. So, yep. yeah, you just never know. <laughs> no. Yeah, they're all going to be different. And they're all working within their passion and with things that they exactly. enjoy and they're good at. So that's yeah, and that's what you want for your kids and for yourself. It is. You, know, you don't, yeah, you don't want them stuck in a nine to five job that they hate. No, let, let them be a bit creative and figure mm. it out. Yeah, yeah. What what would you say to parents who say I'm scared to homeschool because I'm not a teacher and I don't know if I can give them everything they need? Well, you've been teaching them since they were born. You were their first teacher. When your child was born, you've been teaching them how to, you know, to, how to crawl, how to sit, how to eat, how to talk. You've been teaching them from the beginning. You don't need to be a qualified teacher. There's no, no law in Australia that says you must have a degree in teaching to homeschool your child. You learn with them. You learn alongside them. Sometimes you're a step ahead just so you can feel like you're a step ahead. Other times, I'm, I tend to be very honest <laughs> with my kids and go, I don't know. Let's look it up together and we'll learn about it together. And exactly. we go that way because teachers don't know it all either. And you can't, my husband said this, we were talking about stuff last night, and he was like, well, you know what? Your kids are going to get more from you at home with them one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two or three or whatever versus what they're going to get in the classroom with a, one teacher versus 30 kids. Yeah. So. You don't need to have it all. No, and we definitely learned together. I felt like there was so much that I'd forgotten from high school and uni. Um, and we had to, I had to relearn it with them. But it was great because seeing it through their eyes, mm -hmm. you learn it so much better as an adult probably anyway. But yeah. um, it was such a lovely learning experience. And I always say to people, the main thing you need to do is teach your children to love learning and to love figuring things out and love problem solving and then they can learn anything and they will yeah. go you know start getting interested in a subject um, and they'll just take off in it because they've learned how to research they've learned how to find things out for themselves and that's that's what you've got to teach yeah. them is that foundation yeah absolutely and we live in an information rich world so I mean I try and have we have a huge collection of books. So the girls Same. can go and up stuff in books. Um, I'm always buying books. I've got an order coming Same. from, <laughs> from Book Club, which is the one oh, that's nice. cool. So if you don't yeah. know the homeschool, you can actually access the Book Club, same yeah. as the schools. And you get all the great, you actually get more perks as a homeschool family than what you do as a parent buying from the school. So they do it like a 20% reward system. So if you buy books from them, so I just bought seventy dollars worth of books, and I got fourteen dollars back straight up wow. that I can then spend again on my next order of books. So that's it's been so good. I know oh, it's great. So I've got two book club orders coming through, and that's really cool. And it's like Christmas all... every time they arrive, isn't it? Oh no, it's great. <laughs> I've got to actually stash some of these because they're for Easter, which is you know we tend to do books for Easter for our kids. So we that's have nice. a huge collection of library of of books. We mm -hmm. go to the library as well to get books too when we can get there. Um. But unfortunately, I'm a bit terrible, but I'm a bit of a, hey, Siri, 
Yeah. <laughs> and we look stuff up, you know, we ask Siri and we ask Google and we learn to look stuff up that way as well. Yeah. Which that's life know, now, isn't it? It is it is life now. And the kids I mean, know hey, they, I've been to the doctors and the doctors looked things up on the internet. So hey, <laughs> if they can do it, yes, I can. That's true. I have seen my GP Googling stuff and he's yeah. up and I'm like <laughs> but it's learning teaching them to how to know what's reliable information then versus mm. what is personal opinion yes because anyone can publish a website anyone can have a blog like yourself and yeah. you know your your blog is great you're very researched and you have your information and it's factual but someone else could go ahead and publish a different blog on gut health and say the exact opposite of you oh yeah and, you know you've got to teach the children and learn yourself too how to distinguish between fact and fiction and mm. opinion and truth because there's always and you know trying to teach my children to be discerning and go well you know there's the truth there's the facts and then there's you know your version of that as well because everyone yeah. has and what works for you and things like that depending on what it is so we really worked on that even with history so we'd read a mm. book that looked at the that period of history from one viewpoint and then we'd read a book that looked at it from another viewpoint um you know for instance you'd read Australian history and it's written mm. by white people and yep. it's completely different than the um history written by Bruce Pascoe so we read that as well mm. um, we tried to make sure that they understood you have to look at things um, with discernment, like you're saying, that it's just never as simple as it seems <laughs> um, and learning to find out the answers for yourself and not rely on what the media says or what you've yeah. been told by your friends and your peers, look into things, dig deep and um, yeah. learn for yourself. And I think that is a really amazing skill for kids to have. Absolutely. It definitely yeah. is the life skill because it's something mm. that you still even now as an adult to be able to look at something and go, well, hang on. Is that what's true? the other side of the story? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. What's going on? So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you've mentioned a couple of good sources for books. Where else do you get your homeschool books? So I, I have a few places. I love book depository. Yeah. They are great because they do free shipping on books, which shipping on books can be an absolute killer. Mm. <laughs> you know, they because they're heavy. So I like book depository, I love book club. Big W and Kmart these days now are bringing in lots of great books at really good prices. That's so true. You can often find really good little gems tucked away in there. Um, curriculum, I tend to buy from either master books from their website. Like I said, I buy the PDFs and print them myself. Mm-hmm. Or there's another a local supplier for them now, Welcome Home Education, and they're based in New South Wales. Cool. So they're, they're actually in the in the flood zone unfortunately so um, they're a little bit struggling at the moment to get stuff out I don't think they're flooded but postage delays and all that sort of stuff yeah. but they're really good I've bought books from them um, mm. and they have a great collection of American curriculum stuff that they've imported to Australia so you pay a little bit less than what you would buying it from there and you don't have to pay the U.S. shipping prices because yeah. you would know buying some like curriculum books getting them shipped from the U.S. to Australia is like I yeah, at some, it's and like it's probably actually, half the it's probably half the cost is shipping. Sometimes it feels like I always picked and chose what I ordered. Like I didn't just get the whole lot. Well, I yeah. did a couple of times early on, but that was years ago when shipping wasn't as much. But you also have to yes. be careful if you're ordering from overseas not to go over is it a thousand because then you get charged tax. Oh, okay. I can't remember. Yeah, so you do get charged import taxes as if you're a store, you know, Um, as if you're a business, if you go over a certain amount. So there's all of that kind of thing. There's a lot of homeschool forums um, and groups that you can go on to help Mm. you with all this stuff if you're new. Do you have recommendations of some good ones? Facebook has quite a few good groups, like the Homeschool, Home Education Queensland group. The Mm -hmm. ladies that are in there, the administrators have done some fantastic guides that will guide you through signing Mm. up and like the different distance education schools, because there's lots of different DE schools. You've mentioned yeah. Jubilee and then there's a whole mm-hmm. bunch of others as well. Then there's other um, options. So like myself, I'll register through the HEU, which is the home education. Same. So yeah, that's I, who we went through. Yeah. And that's in Queensland, who you go through is that if you do your own thing, 
and you have to do your reporting to them, which isn't a big deal. But every state is different. So depending on your state, they have different requirements. I know New South Wales, you have an AP come and visit you and they come and look at your program, meet your kids. But you get two, you can get like two years registration. Whereas here in Queensland, we only get 12 months. Yeah. Or 10 technically, because you've got to do yeah, your true. So mm. it's not terrible. Um, I think WA has a similar system to New South Wales. I'm not sure about Victoria or Tassie. I think they're a little bit more relaxed again. So okay. but if you, once again, if you ask Google, you should be able to, <laughs> the key words will be your state, homeschool requirements, and the government will have a list of them. Yeah. As to what you're required to have. And, do. and each state has their own home education unit. I yeah. Believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot what question I was going to ask you there. It'll come back to me. Sure. Um, okay, so here's a little curly question. I'm actually a teacher and one of my kids just won't listen to me. Ideas? <laughs> I'll let you answer that one. That's oh, a hard one. Kids don't always <laughs> listen at the end of the That's day. That's life. <laughs> the, the biggest thing is I don't know this person's situation, but the best advice that I've seen talked about lots and I didn't have to do it, but I know a lot of people that do and I've always said to people, if your kids have been in school, so if they've come from a schooling environment, you need to spend a period of time, be it a month, two or three, depending on the child and how long, how great the trauma might have been, is to call, but I'll untie my tongue, is de-schooling. So you spend a period yeah. of time at home where the kids just decompress, heal from whatever's happened, get over it and adjust to being back at home and seeing you their parent in that teacher light because mm. it is a different it is a different thing my girls are very lucky in that they've always seen me as teacher so they know they have to listen to me but they still have moments where they're like I don't want to do school and I we have a very open and honest conversation with them I'm like well at the end of the day I'm sorry sweetheart mommy has to educate you whether I do that here at home with me or whether we enroll you into school and you go to out school, they call it, and go into classes. Out and school. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not That's sure cute. where they got that term from. But it works. You have to go to school and do school that way. And what do you want to do? Do you want to stay here with me or do you want to go to school? And they both tend to go, mm, stay here and do it with you. Well, then you need to listen <laughs> to me and do what you want. So depending yeah. on the child that might work, that kind of conversation, um, you might find that you're, the kid needs to learn a certain way, teaching to the yes. child where they're at, that learning style, whether they're hands-on, or auditory, visual can help too. But mm -hmm. I yeah. think one thing we, we really found that if you focused on the relationship first, that's the most yeah. important thing, um, and get... Like if you're having a really bad day or your kids are having a bad day and they're screaming and running around and not listening or whatever, put the schoolwork down, get outside with a picnic blanket, have some books and a picnic and just laze around and read books together. Um, do something that builds the relationship. Go for a swim, go for a bush walk together. Um, get out the paints and make crazy finger paintings together. Do something fun that yeah. they go, I like being with mum. I yeah. want to have fun together with mum. Um, do things that are enjoyable as a family and then start bringing the harder schoolwork back in when that relationship is restored because if you don't have that good relationship, they're not going to learn. And if there's a lot of stress, if you're going, you have to do this right now, sit down right now, they're not going to learn. We don't learn like that. No. You've got to have peace and calmness. In, in some ways, I mean, there's going to be a bit of chaos, but if you've got anxiety chaos. and stress, yeah, <laughs> organised chaos, happy chaos, that's what I call yeah. it. Um, yeah. if, you, if, there's a, if there's that anxiety and that stress and anger, um, you've got to calm that down first before mm. you can teach. Absolutely. That relationship has to be your number one. Mm. Otherwise, your kids are going to hate you. They're going to hate school and you're not going to get anywhere. They're not going to learn. No, not going to learn. Oh, they'll learn one thing. They'll learn how to hate you and how to hate school. Yeah. <laughs> and how, to, how to be an angry person. Yeah, and that's not what you want. No. Um, so if, if someone's feeling really overwhelmed, how would you 
I think that's probably even we've just answered that. Yeah. Stop. Go. Right. Go play for a while. (laughs) The the beauty of homeschooling is that you don't have to be bound by Monday Mm. to Friday, nine to three. Learning has to happen in those timeframes. If you're a family Mm. that are night people, you might find your kids do schoolwork better at night, you know, to put it at night. But take a break. Yeah, read a book together. Go and do an art, do some painting, do some Play-Doh if your kids are younger, you know, or even if they're not young, young. I still find yeah. that kids of all ages love Play-Doh or something therapeutic about it or, you know, make a loaf of bread together and get them kneading and doing that, exactly. that kind of hands-on thing. Make a cake, um, you know, go go to the library, go on a, go on a field trip, take a, take a, take a breath from school and yeah. know that it's okay. And that yeah. by having a day off or even having a week off, because if you've been sick or your kids have been sick or something's not, you know, there's there's a big stress in the family, something something's happened. It's okay to take a week off school and just let them play. Yeah. It will be there when you come back. And if you're not following the school term, it's okay. Yeah. We <laughs> we we kind of follow it, but not really at the same time. Um we it depends on what's happening in our world, whether like because of the sport, I sort of follow up with netball. It makes it a little bit easier because of training and games and all of that. Um, but outside of that, sometimes we'll do like a four weeks on and one week off. And then that, that week off is my week that I will get a whole bunch of housework done and yeah. tidy up and the kids can just have a, a week off to decompress and then we get back in the next week and everything's happy. But we holiday as a family in off seasons. So we don't go away during the school holiday. I'm like, nope, I don't have to. My husband isn't a teacher. We're not required to holiday in those, you know, set two weeks of a year. So we take time off usually in November and go away when it's nowhere near as busy or crowded or crazy and we love it. It's great. Yeah, we always did that too because we learned the hard way that um, you can't get into places you want to get into because it's too busy on school holidays and it costs more. So you may as well just do it off season kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the flexibility is one of the biggest benefits of homeschooling. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So what do you do when you have to try and keep your kids calm and productive in wet weather? There's a lot of that going on at the moment. People oh. are stuck inside. Um, kids are climbing the walls. Maybe, you know, there's going to be a lot of families that probably have kids in caravans and all sorts of things at the mm-hmm. moment because of, um, all that's been going on how can like what do you do what's some tips well to be honest I actually send my kids out to play in the rain if it's not yes <laughs> so did I. if it's not actually bucketing if it's down not. Rain and they are really like if it's safe lightning if it's safe mm-hmm. I have sent my kids out rain rain boots yes. rain coat. off you go go and play in the trampoline go burn some energy go outside and play it's okay if it's a storm obviously not no, um, but they do things like that. There's lots of great um, kids exercise videos on YouTube. So if you type yeah. in kids YouTube, there's yoga and there's things like um, different like dance games and stuff that they can do. So, you know, pop one of those on and get the kids to do a dance workout in the lounge room, just clear the space, push the couches back and things like that. <laughs> um, we have a Nintendo Switch and it has, I have the the sports the PE game for that. So they'll do some of that really wet. Um, If the weather's really terrible and they're really feeling anxious about it, learn about it. Go and study Mm. that weather pattern so the kids can understand what's going on Um, because knowledge brings reassurance more often than not. It can bring fear, yes, but it can bring an understanding of going, okay, well, we know what it's happening and whatnot. And if you have a week off because it's just really wet and the kids are driving, you know, they're not wanting to learn or focus, but I often find that my kids get bored anyway and that yeah. school gives them something to do. Mm-hmm. If we don't do school, like over that long Christmas period. Yeah, we, I was just thinking break, of that. But, you know, you, school ends in December-ish. Once Christmas is done, They're bored. they tend to get a bit twitchy. Like mm. they've, done, they've done what they want to do and they start to get a bit twitchy and bored. So I start pulling out activities, school, you know, revision stuff and activity sheets and go, okay, here, do this or do that. Um, they, they tend to not get as bored then. They don't tend yeah. to. Me, I'm bored. 
Yeah. Well, we always had new books for the new year, so it was like, when yeah. are we open them? <laughs> yeah, we so did was all very excited. Yeah. They were very excited to start school this year because it was all yeah. new books and new pencils and stuff. So Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's hard and, and again, it's, though. yeah, it's just, again, the whole idea of reducing stress um, and doing some fun stuff together, baking together, all of that kind of thing, if, if it's all too hard. Yeah. Well, baking is a great one because it covers so many curriculum areas. Mm, Everything it is. Like starts because they're reading that recipe to your maths because they're learning about volume capacity and how to measure and how to read and science because it's a chemical reaction. And problem solving because we never have all the right ingredients. <laughs> so you, you might not and you've learned how and, and yeah, that, that learning how to, okay, well, we don't have any of this, but I can substitute that and it'll be about the same and, and yeah. tweak <laughs> I have, I have you to thank for that. I actually learned a lot oh, good. from watching you cook and going, okay, what can and we knowing use that I can actually tweak that and, and it usually works. So I learned yeah. a lot from cooking, oh, that's cooking good by to feel hear. from watching your videos over the years. Well, I've been following you now for, oh, my gosh, a long time because I bought oh. your original. I had the original. Oh, my first book, which was yeah, 2014. Okay. Yeah, so and just before that I found you because I went dairy free. Oh and there you trying go. to find dairy free stuff that wasn't too I don't know. Yeah. I found you through Thermonix and dairy free stuff. Oh, and, that's good. So yeah. A long time. Mm, wow. Well, there's one more thing I wanted to say about when things are a bit difficult with the weather and just thinking of the flooding and everything that's going on at the moment. Um, you mentioned educating them about mm. what's happening with the weather and things like that. I think also another good thing is getting them involved in helping out. Mm. Um, so community service type stuff. Um, yeah. Whenever, especially when kids start to get a bit um, selfish or they're like a bit precious about their things or whatever, to get them out helping people in need mm. makes such a gigantic difference. And I know even from my own childhood, my parents helped a lot with that kind of thing. Um, cooking meals for people in need, um, all of that kind of stuff. And so I learned that from a really young age and it just became a natural, whoops, are you still there? Yeah. Yep. Sorry, my phone's saying it's low power. Um, oh. so <laughs> I just found that that really shaped who I am, but it also made me really aware that um, my kids need that to be a well-rounded person. They need to see all sides of life and they need to help other people in need. And um, whenever they get a bit bored or, yeah, to think that they're owed everything yeah. um, and you need to make my life more fun kind of idea, Yeah, get them out there helping other people. Definitely. Even if it's just baking bickies for the neighbour, whatever, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we'll probably have to finish up soon because, yeah, my phone's going to die. But other than that, have you got anything that you really want to say that um, um, to get across to new homeschoolers? That it's okay not to know everything, that just have a go. <laughs> the the mm. biggest thing is just if you're not sure, just try it. There's no yeah. law that says that you've, oh, now you've started homeschooling, you've got to do it till they're 18 and graduating. You can do it exactly. for a year and if, you find that it really isn't working for you, for your kids, you can pop them back it's into okay. school. One year out isn't going to totally derail their schooling. You're not going to undo everything. You might find that you actually really love it and that it works really well. So I'm always of, a, of an opinion of just try it and see. There's no guarantees either way. Um, Some people do um, homeschool for one year while they travel, for instance. Yeah. We yeah. did that a couple of times. Mm. And some people do it because of different reasons and find they actually really love it. A lot mm. of family, a lot of families actually started out of the pandemic. They found yeah. that having to do it, they were like, oh, oh, we can actually do this. Oh, I actually really like it. And the kids, mm. kids changed at home. They found, found a new equi equilibrium because it was a lot less stressful, a lot less anxiety yeah. for the kids and stuff. So, you know, it, it really isn't as hard or as scary as you want it to be. Distance education is a great place to start if you're unsure yeah. because that you'll have a teacher to support you. They provide you with all the curriculum and you just need to support your child in the learning. Once you've gotten your feet and found your feet doing it, that way you can jump in and do things like I've done with the HEU. And it's not that hard. Like I've been doing mm -hmm. it now five years and I've never had a report returned with a, you know, you've been deregistered. 
They've never even asked me. Usually all they'll do is go, we want more information. I've never even had that because they don't care what you're doing. They want to know how you as the parent are supporting, encouraging and facilitating the learning of your child in an individualised way. Yeah. So. And they do give you a lot of um, help if you ask for it. And there's also Mm -hmm. um, samples of how to do reports and what to look for and what to um, like all through the year, taking samples of your kids' work and putting them into a folder so that at the end of the year you can send them off with the report and um, yeah. all of that kind of thing. So you learn as you go. Definitely. And it's not, mm. it doesn't have to be perfect. No. So. And, it, and it's going to look different for every family and that's um, important to remember. Yeah. Don't compare your homeschool journey to anybody else's. Um, yeah. Yeah. I should um, answer this last question. I'd love to hear your children's view of homeschooling. Obviously, I don't have them on the, well, I could I could interview them and just stick it on the end. You could. Um, yeah. But I have I did. my children on my channel about what they oh, love about. Good. Oh, we'll have to have that link as well. But I did ask them a few times if they wanted to go to school because I got really busy with work and everything and trying to write books and all of that kind of thing. And they went for two terms to um, only for two days a week to the distance ed school that they went through Jubilee. You could go to school part-time. Yeah. And then they were just like, no, nah, we don't want to do that. We want to stay at home. So <gasps> couldn't get I rid of them. Get, <laughs> I think they get used to it as in like yeah. there's that certain comfort, you know, like you were saying about food. My kids yep. are used to eating whatever they want. I don't think they'd cope with the whole you can only eat at 11 o'clock and midday or whatever <laughs> it is. What do you I'm mean? I'm going to tell you a funny. Wait. I'm going to tell you a funny story. The first day um, they went to school, um, my kids are very far north Queensland outdoory kids. And the first day they went to school and they came home and India was unpacking a school bag and she pulled out a, um, a pocket knife. And I said, you didn't take that to school, did you? She goes, yes. What else am I going to cut my apple with? I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> she had a pocket knife at school. Like you're not allowed to take pocket knives to school. <laughs> Oh, okay. I didn't know. <laughs> so, yeah, they're a different, different breed homeschoolers. <laughs> so lucky she didn't get caught with that one. Goodness. Oh, that was so funny. So but, funny. yeah, I love, I love how my kids have turned out. And, sure, I didn't do everything perfectly, but um, do you ever parent- I, think they've, I think they've ended up with um, that love of learning still. And they've ended up with a really lovely um, attitude towards all age groups. And so I consider that a win. (laughs) I think at the end of the day, every parent wants their child to be a happy, well-rounded, polite, Mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. Person. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's my goal anyway is to have a happy, happy person, happy child that, you know, can be socialised and... um, (laughs) know how to hold a conversation and not be completely weird at least no and, weird what, and a, a useful member of society yeah <laughs> yeah yes. well that's good Absolutely. well um so can you explain again where everyone can find you but I will put the links below but if you're listening to yes. this in the car or something so I'm on Instagram at Aussie Homeschool Adventures and also on YouTube by the same name so if you search for me you'll probably there's not too many even if you type in Australian homeschooling on YouTube you'll probably find myself there's a few of us now there's a growing number on YouTube of Aussie homeschoolers that have jumped on but we are certainly in the minority but it's really good to see there's some great content out there so yeah yeah definitely it's all helpful it is thank you so much for joining me today thanks for really good lots of fun all right I better let you get back to your kids yes (laughs) I'll make (laughs) sure that's go see how the stories are going Yes. All right. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. See ya. See ya.